Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we are going to talk about Escherichia coli. It is one of the most important bacteria in bacteriology. So first of all, what is Escherichia coli? It is a gram-negative bacteria, and it belongs to a group known as Enterobacteria. Enterobacteria. So thus, it contains all the characteristics of Enterobacteria, like it is a facultative anaerobe. Facultative in a row. Second one, let it permit glucose. All the interior bacteria permit glucose. The third one is that they are oxidase negative. Oxidase negative, it means that they don't contain any you know, oxidase enzyme, cytochrome oxidase enzyme. And the fourth one is that they reduce nitrates into nitrites nitrites and this is for the purpose of their energy production energy production but in addition to the glucose fermentation this enterobacteria this escherichia coli they are also lactase fermenter and this is one of the most important point from which we can dis through which we can distinguish the escherichia coli from other enterobacteria organisms and the other point is that they are mainly present in the colon they are mainly present in the colon although this Escherichia coli belongs to a group of enteric bacteria which can be present in the colon as well as outside the colon but mainly they are present in the colon Also, this Escherichia coli, it is the second most abundant, second most abundant bacteria after the bacteriides in the colon. Second most abundant bacteria after the bacteriides in the colon. The most abundant bacteria in the colon is bacteriides. Now, what are the antigen present in the Escherichia coli through which it can cause the disease or through which it can produce the pathogenesis. So it has mainly three antigens. Three antigens. The first one, the first antigen is the somatic or cell wall antigen. Cell wall antigen. It is also known as O antigen. And the most important Escherichia coli are the O O fifty five O fifty five and O one 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 containing Escherichia coli because they cause the outbreaks of neonatal diarrhea. They cause the outbreak of neonatal diarrhea. So those those Escherichia coli which contains these somatic antigens O fifty five in O triple one, they are the most important because they cause what they cause the neonatal diarrhea. The second antigen, the second antigen present in the Escherichia coli is the H, the H or the plagiar, plagiar antigen. Hence, and hence those Escherichia coli which contains this plagiar or H antigen, they are motile because the this plagiar produces the movement. The third one antigen present in this Escherichia coli are K or capsular capsular antigen. The first one is the somatic or O antigen. The second one is the plagiar or H antigen. In the capsular or the K antigen, K capsular K. So this can be remembered by the uh, word capsular or K. Capsular or K. So, somatic antigen or cell wall antigen, plagiar antigen or the capsular antigen, these are the three antigens which are present in the Escherichia coli. Now, let's talk about the epidemiology. Epidemiology of Escherichia coli. So, they are mostly present, as I have already discussed, they are mostly present in the colon. And from this, this colon, it can be transmitted or it can colonize the urogenital tract 
urogenital tract and from this urogenital tract it can either cause the UTI or it can be transmit to neonates to cause the neonatal neonatal meningitis which is one of the most important cause of meningitis in the neonates also this can be transmitted through the pico oral route pico oral route and thus it can cause the diarrhea one of the most important reservoir for the anterior hemorrhagic excretia coli anterior hemorrhagic we will study about this strain of excretia coli which contain the O157 O157 somatic antigen and one of the most important main reservoir is the cattle and this anterior hemorrhagic strain of excretia coli or, Z or O157 it can be acquired from this undercooked undercooked uh, undercook meat of the cattle like in the palm of hamburgers so it is one of the most important reservoir of anterior hemorrhagic excretia coli what are the diseases causing agents of the excretia coli what are the disease causing agents of excretia coli so they mainly cause diseases by using its pili by using its capsule and by the endotoxin or exotoxin they produce so they mainly cause disease by the pili by the capsule capsule for the attachment and pili for also the attachment endotoxin for in the end uh, and the exotoxin through which it can cause different types of disease which we will study next the pus disease the pus disease or the pus infection they mostly cause the intestinal tract infection intestinal tract infection in the intestinal in the intestine they mainly cause either the watery diarrhea or the bloody diarrhea either the watery diarrhea or the bloody di diarrhea or, or either it can also cause watery diarrhea or the bloody diarrhea so first talking about the watery diarrhea so watery diarrhea it is mainly produced by the interior toxigenic strains of excretia coli watery diarrhea it is caused by the interior toxigenic strain of e coli how does it cause the watery diarrhea it caused the watery diarrhea by adhering to the mucosa of the intestinal tract it adhered to the mucosa of intestinal tract mainly in the jejunum and ileum and it is because that these exotoxin which we will discuss in a few minutes these exotoxin like the heat labile toxin or the heat stable toxin they are the cell specific to the ileum and jejunum because these receptors are only present in the ileum and jejunum by adhering to the specific cells in the jejunum and ileum they do not invade these cells they do not invade these cells or do not cause any type of inflammation they just produce two types of toxin the heat labile toxin or the heat stable toxin the heat stable toxin what this heat label and heat stable toxin do they produce the wa the watery diarrhea in a different way the heat first of all the heat label toxin they are broken down by the heat that's why it is also called the heat label toxin and the other toxin which is the heat stable toxin it is stable to the heat so that's why it is known as the heat stable toxin so the heat label toxin what does it do that it cause the adp ribosylation ribosylation of gs proteins gs proteins what this then do when this gs proteins is ribosylated 
it will in turn activate the adenylate adenylate cyclase this adenylate cyclase will increase the production of scamp and this increased production of CAMP will activate the CAMP dependent kinases. CAMP dependent kinases will in turn phosphorylate, phosphorylate the ion transporters, the ion transporters, and this ion transporter, this phosphorylation will open the ion transporter, causing the outpouring of different types of fluids in ions like potassium ions, calcium ion and other sodium ion producing an osmotic effects which will in turn draw the water and thus producing watery diarrhea. Watery diarrhea. So this is the mechanism by which the enterotoxin strain of Scritia coli causing diarrhea in the jejunum and ileum. Now this heat labile toxin do it by what by ADP ribosidation of GS proteins which will in turn produce what the activation of adenylate cyclase what this did heat stable protein do toxin do they only the only difference is it they only activate the guanylate guanylate cyclase and this guanylate cyclase will include the CGMP and the mechanism is said producing watery diarrhea. Watery diarrhea. So what will be the clinical findings of this watery diarrhea? The main clinical finding will be what the first one will be watery is indicated by name non-bloody, non-bloody self-limited self limited diarrhea having a short duration having a short duration of about one to three days it will having a watery non-bloody self limiting diarrhea of short duration of, of only about up one to three days and hence it's due to its short duration it is also called as travelers diarrhea diarrhea or tourista it is also called traveler's diarrhea or tourista due to occurrence in the travelers because of its short duration of action and short incubation period it is mainly present in the travelers so this was the mechanism the epidemiology and the antigens short introduction about the Escherichia coli we will study about the bloody diarrhea and the strain which caused the bloody diarrhea in the next lecture so thank you